السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praises are due to Allah The creator, the cherisher and the sustainer of this universe And may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad And his descendants and his followers and his companions Dear respected followers of Prophet Muhammad in Ottawa Jazakumullah khairan for the invite Jazakallah khair uh, Imam Zaid for this uh, introduction and before I start I want each and every one of you to imagine that if he or she goes home back tonight that you will find a family of four people standing at your door I'm not going to say more than that a father and a mother and two children and they tell you we are refugees who lost our home back home in our country and we don't have a place to shelter us what are you going to do I believe the people who come at that time of the night to the mosque to pray and then they sit to listen to learn about Islam until Isha and then they pray again at around 11 and they go home around midnight are not the kind of people who will just put $20 in their hand and close their door at the time of a rainy night like that at least you will tell them okay please come in spend this night with us until we solve your problem tomorrow but you know the stronger Iman in the heart the more one becomes able to sacrifice the materialistic life so can we find among us someone who will tell them please come in stay with us until your problem in your country is solved some of you are saying now who's that guy <laughs> Are you inviting someone from England when he's that nuts? It's very clear. Can anyone be like that? No, wait. Wait until you listen to the, to the third one. Can we find among us someone who will tell them, please come in. You will live with us forever. We will share our home with you. Of course, many of you would say, can anyone be like that? Actually, a whole people who are like that, who, re who received a whole, a big group of refugees in their houses and they shared them with them with the intentions that they stay with them forever, sharing their houses, every two families in a house. Those people were called Al-Ansar, and the refugees were called Al-Muhajirin. So definitely, their Iman was much more stronger than our Iman. Of course, many of you are also saying, come on, <laughs> that's a very unfair comparison. Why? Why is it an unfair comparison? You can't compare us to the Ansar. Why can't I compare us to the Ansar? Because the Ansar are those people who receive tarbiyah from Rasulullah. Right or wrong? Right? Wrong. Wrong. At the point when the Ansar were receiving the Muhajireen in their houses, they did not see Prophet Muhammad yet. Only like 75 of them saw him for a few minutes under the darkness of the night in Ba'at al aqab al and that's it. They did not read one hadith for him yet. And their faith was stronger a million times than us. You see? No, I can't. We have to compare ourselves to them at that point when the Muhajireen were arriving at Medina. They received them in their houses with the intentions that they live with them forever. And you know what? 
after five years, after the incidents of Banu Nadir. Banu Nadir is a Jewish tribe that tried to assassinate Prophet Muhammad And the judge who judged between them and the Muslims was the head of the hypocrites, Ibn Salul. Because the Prophet knew that he's not gonna put any of them to death. Though they tried to assassinate the Prophet. And the Prophet was okay with that. So he said, you just leave Medina. That's it. Okay, they left Medina. And they left their houses. And their land. So they left wealth. The Prophet told the Ansar, choose. Either I divide their these games, these booties among you and the Muhajirin, but in this case the Muhajirin will not have enough money to leave your houses because they have been living with them for five years and build their own houses or buy houses. So they will stay with you, but I will divide the wealth between you evenly. Or I give it all to the Muhajireen and they leave your houses and go and have their own separate houses. The answer said both options are rejected. You will give the Muhajireen all the money and they will keep staying with us in our houses. And the Muhajireen said, Jazakumullah Khairan, that's too much. We won't do that. We have to leave. And the Many of the Ansar broke down and cried. Why do you want to leave us? The Muhajirin said, come on guys, it's been five years. The houses are packed. We can't move inside the houses, all of us. Allow us to leave. And the, and the Ansar cry and say, no, we must have done something wrong. Did we hurt your feelings in any way? Ya Allah. I'm sure that you are now wondering what kind of Muslims were these? And I'm sure that if they look at us today when we tell this family of refugees come on in only one night until you find a problem and you, you, save your, you solve your problem tomorrow they will also wonder about us what kind of Muslims are these? Definitely the difference between our Iman and their Iman is vast. The question is, what did the Ansar have that made their Iman that strong? If they were not at that time strengthened by the Prophet's teachings even yet, what, may, what did they have that we do not have today? One thing, the Quran. Many of you are looking at the shelves. No, we have lots of Qur'ans. Look, look, look. MashaAllah. Especially in this mosque, we have a lot of Qur'ans. No. No. We have the words of the Qur'an, but they had the reality of the Qur'an in their hearts. Because the way they dealt with the Qur'an is different from the way we deal with the Qur'an. The way they dealt with the Qur'an allowed the Qur'an to change them. But the way we deal with the Qur'an does not allow the Qur'an to change us. We put obstacles between us and the Qur'an. We pushed Prophet Muhammad to go to Allah and complain to Allah from us. That's in the Qur'an. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا and the messenger said, Oh my Lord, my people have dealt with this Qur'an by deserting it. He didn't say they hajar al-Qur'an. No, he didn't say so. He didn't say they deserted the Qur'an. We did not desert the Qur'an. We deal with it. We memorize it. We make contests to choose the most beautiful voices. And we give them presents and, and we give them gifts for being al-mizmar al-dhahbi, the most beautiful voice and stuff, right? We deal with the Qur'an by deserting it. We deserted it, fahman. 
we deserted understanding it, we deserted tadabbur, we deserted pondering upon its ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليتدبروا آياته A blessed book that I have sent down to you so that they may ponder upon its signs. Ayat is signs, not verses. Huh? That's the new translation. Our translation. I don't know if you know or not, but Bridges Foundation have in, has a new translation now. It is the first translation of the ten qiraat of the Quran. You can download. It's an app. Anyway, I'm not here to advertise our app. But it's, it's a translation that was made especially for people who want to do tadabbur from the English language. Because it's possible. And I'll tell you how. But before that, let me continue introducing myself. There are things that usually our hosts don't say about me. But I don't feel embarrassed to say. I'm Egyptian from a part of Egypt where people are made jokes. We are the uh, stock of jokes in Egypt. People make jokes about us. We are called Saida from a place called Saeed. They make jokes about us, saying that we are naive. I'm not denying that we are, to an extent, naive. And I'll tell you a story, a real story that happened, and it's not a joke. One of my uh, relatives is an ENT doctor, ear and throat. He received a farmer who is complaining from a pain in the ear. By checking his ear, he found that he has inflammation deep inside in his ear. So he gave him an antibiotic course. He said you need to take 500 milligram capsule every eight hours. Okay. The man came back after two days complaining that the pain is the same and it's not getting better at all. The doctor said, yes, it's been only two days and the antibiotic usually needs four to five days to work. So please continue taking your medicine. He said, well, I can't take anymore. He said, why? Continue taking your medicine, man. He said, well, I can't take anymore. What's wrong with this guy? Continue taking your medicine. Said, well, I can't take anymore. So what's wrong with this guy? By checking his ear, he found that he was pushing a capsule in his ear every eight hours. You're laughing at us. Okay. I'm happy that you laughed. I personally like to do tadabbur for everything, even for such stories. Hey, ponder upon, upon this story with me. The man was taking the medicine and it didn't help him. Why? Because he was taking it the wrong way. Right? You must take the medicine the right way so that it works, right? What else is a medicine? Can you tell me? Quran is a medicine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ We send down of the Quran what is a healing and a mercy to the believers. So the Quran is a medicine. A medicine for the ailments of the heart. For envy, for grudges, for hatred, for all of these ailments of the heart, diseases of the heart. And we are using the Quran, but still our diseases are not fixed. Maybe we are using the Quran the wrong way, like that guy that we just laughed at. I'm so happy that you laughed at him. You are laughing about yourselves, guys. Guys, we have a crisis in dealing with the Quran. We must ponder upon it. If you know Arabi, perfect. Go ahead. From now on, don't read the Quran except if you are pondering every single day. Every single day. You know what? If you take the medicine that the doctor gave you, for example, if the doctor gave you this uh, antibiotic and you take it the proper way, with, from your, with any orally, but instead of taking a capsule every eight hours, you take a capsule every two, three days when you remember until you finish the whole box. 
it's not going to work still. Why? Because the dosage need to be a certain concentrated dosage. Same thing, the Quran cannot be taken every more than 24 hours. 24 hours should not pass without you taking the dosage. You need to read the Quran every day. The Quran increases your Iman, right? Umrah also increases your Iman. Who went to Umrah? You remember your Iman when you finished the Umrah? Amazing. Amazing. A high level of Iman. You remember when did it damp? As soon as you went to Jeddah. And you went to the first mall, Al Malika mall, whatever. <clears throat> Within a week, it's gone. Why? Because the Umrah has a certain way of increasing the Iman. You can, okay, do Umrah every day then. But the Quran is a tool that you use every day to keep your Iman on a high level. Every day. And if you don't know Arabic, what to do? Can I do Tadabbur? Yes, you can do Tadabbur. I'll tell you this. Allah said, a blessed book that I have sent down to you, O Muhammad, so that they, people, would do Tadabbur for it. لِيَدَّبَّرُوا <clears throat> آيَاتِهِ And Allah knows that one day we will be 1.6 billion people in this world, Muslims in this world. Only 250 million of them know Arabic. And all the rest will not know Arabic. And Arabic is not that simple. Many non-Arab speaking Muslims try to, under, to learn Arabic. And they couldn't, they failed. Some did it, but most don't. Does it mean that this is the end of the story of the Quran? No, no. Many people read the Quran and became Muslim, right or not? The, um, Cat Stevens is now Yusuf Islam. Read his story, he read the Quran, he became Muslim. In which language did he read the Quran? In Arabic? No. He read it in English, which means that he did not read the Quran, he just read the translation for the Quran. 60% accurate, 70% accurate. Still, it affected him to the extent that it made him change his religion. So even from a translation, you can have a big effect on your heart. Suhaib Web. Imam Suhaib, I consider him one of the most knowledgeable people in North America. I know the man. He, we, he, I mean, we, he made two films with me. I know him so well, mashallah. But he is very humble. Yeah. He was a DJ. DJ. And then what happened? He read the Quran and that what happened? He became Suhaib Web. In which language did he read the Quran? English. It's not the Quran, he just read the translation. No one knows how accurate it was, but still it affected him. So as a Muslim who doesn't know Arabic, if you read a good translation of the Quran with pondering and understanding, it will increase your level of Iman. That's why actually we made our translation. Our translation is different. I'm not saying it's better, it's different. How do you translate this in English? Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. Right? No, it's not like that in any translation. You know why? Because قل is say, قل. when Allah is addressing a group, it is also say. So, so that the translator would let you know that this is قل, not قل. He has put between brackets, O Prophet or O Muhammad. So what you read is, Say, O Muhammad, A'udhu bi Rabbil Nas. Say, O Muhammad, Huwa Allahu Ahad. Say, O Muhammad, A'udhu bi Rabbil Fala. Allah didn't say that. Allah said, Say, A'udhu bi Rabbil Fala. But how can I let you know that this is a singular say? I have to put between, no, we found a different, we tweaked the English language. Say, and next to it, a small SG, which means singular. I don't put for you, O Muhammad, or O Prophet, or anything. 
قولوا آمنا بالله In all the translations say between brackets O mankind we believe in Allah Allah doesn't say O mankind maybe he means O believers no one knows so why impose my understanding on you between brackets just say PL plural so I'm bringing the spirit of the Quran closer to you you understand this and many other differences of course this is the first translation for the Qira'at al-Ashra and so on so from a good translation whether ours or anyone's translation there are also good translations you can still ponder the Quran Iqbal Muhammad Iqbal the, the prophet of Islam the Pakistani prophet of Islam said the Quran is the book of books it is the only book that can change the world because it is the only book that can change the human being and when the human being changes the world will change but people don't change by just memorizing they have to understand feel and ponder that's important ah tadabbur is actually the main thing that changes you when Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As asked Prophet Muhammad sallam, in how many days should I read the whole Quran the Prophet sallam, said 40 days he said no I can do better than that the Prophet said a month he said no 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 I can do better than that the Prophet said, a week? He said, no, 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 I can do better than that. The Prophet said, three days? No, 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 I can finish it in less than that. The Prophet then reprimanded and said, in less than three, you will not understand it. So it's important to read with understanding. And the Prophet's first advice definitely was the best one. 40 days, take your time. Spend as much time as you can every day with the Quran. But you don't have to read a lot. Look at the ayah as a beautiful portrait. Look at the relationship of this ayah with the ayah before it and with the ayah after. Look at the hidden messages that are in every ayah. That can change it. That's every ayah is full of sources of iman that can if they can gush in your heart and boost your iman in, in your heart but just allow the ayah to change you don't put obstacles don't read it quickly without understanding there are people just read 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 read, read. you know what even Arab people are Arabs and they understand Arabic they have a certain way to read the Quran without understanding Wallahi if you ask an Arab to read the Quran, he can ask you this stupid question. Okay, would you like me to read it with understanding or without understanding? What do you mean without understanding? Yeah, we can read the Quran without understanding. This question is never asked about any book except the book of Allah. This is what we added to the book of Allah. This is our contribution to the book of Allah. We have made it the only title in the world which is read without understanding. We will come on judgment day and say, Oh Allah, we used to read your book without understanding. Imagine this. Subhanallah, we, do, we did crazy things and we added them to the religion. What do you mean without understanding? You know what? There's a hadith of Uthman ibn Affan saying, كنا نتعلم مع رسول الله العشر آيات من القرآن لا نتجاوزها حتى نتعلم ما فيها من علم وعمل فتعلمنا القرآن والعلم والعمل جميعا We used to learn ten آيات ten signs of the Quran with, Prophet of Muhammad, with, the, with the Prophet of Allah and we don't exceed them until we learn how to recite them, tilawa, their meanings, and the application, how to apply them in our lives practically. 
So we learn the Quran, which means the tilawa, wal ilma and the knowledge, wal amala and the application, all together. The same hadith is narrated by Ibn Mas'ud, but it says five ayat. It doesn't say ten ayat. Is this a contradiction? No. It means that the Prophet ﷺ had different halaqas. Every halaqa, every group, he knows them. He knows their potentials. This group five, this group seven, this group ten, and so on. But the issue is, it's all about letting the Quran change you through understanding it and feeling it. The Quran is full of feelings. Hmm. One of the things that we just did tadabbur for two days ago, I don't know, some of, does anyone here follow our daily tadabbur? Havr tajawwal. Anyone here? One, two, three, four, five, okay. There's like seven or eight people. Today was the 835th session, halqa, in 835 days. Alhamdulillah, we did not stop. We have like thousands of people who are with us every day on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and uh, what else, uh, Clubhouse. And they refused to stop even at the days of Eid. Five Eids. And this coming one will be the sixth one when we will not stop, inshallah. And when Allah got me Corona, Alhamdulillah, it was mild. We didn't even stop for one day. A couple of days ago, we were actually uh, 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 doing tadabbur for the ayah in Surah An-Nisa. Let me quickly get you the ayah and see. Um, one moment. It was amazing. Here. Okay. Uh, ayah. When Allah says, uh, that He has prepared, وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا An ayah prepared for the kafirin a humiliating adab, torture. The ayah after that says, Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharra. Allah does not do any injustice even as, as small as an atom. We realized from our tadabbur for two and a half years that every time nearly Allah speaks about Adab, in the next ayat, he is clearing himself from vulm. He says, but I don't do injustices. Let's see the feelings and emotions here. Why is Allah clearing himself from doing injustices? Allah doesn't need to clear himself from anything. Allah can do whatever he wants. Imagine yourself that you have like a company and then your son came with you once to the office and he saw you punishing one of the uh, employees. What will come to your mind? You don't want your son to think bad about you. You will look at him and say, by the way, Baba never oppresses people. Because you care about his relationship with you. You love him and you don't want him to look at you like you, did, you do anything, you do any injustice. So when Allah every time speaks about adab, he says, but I don't do any injustices. There is some emotions here. Allah loves you and he doesn't want you to think that Allah does any injustice. So Allah cares about you and you should also share this love with Allah. So it's, a, it's, it's beautiful the way you do tadabbur. Will always, you will receive messages to your heart all the time. This helped a lot of people, and I don't like to say this because sometimes people misunderstand. I'm not telling anyone to do that, but I have three cases of people stopping antidepressants. They said we don't need it anymore. For years they were on antidepressants, and then 
with the continuous tadabbur every day, they stopped and they don't need it. And I told them, don't do that. They said, just go to your psychiatrist and maybe he just decreases it gradually. They stopped it. And I'm not telling anyone to do that, but I'm telling you, it helped people. It may help any others. This is a healing for the heart, a healing for the ailments of the nafs. So, why aren't we allowing the Quran to do that? You know what? The last time I gave this lecture in Egypt was before the Inqilab in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Al Azhar University. 400 students were there, students of Al Azhar. So I told them, how many of you are memorizers of Al Baqarah? All of them raised their hands, of course. In how long did it take you to, to, to memorize Al-Baqarah? Some of them said four months, some of them said four days, but on the average it was eight weeks. I said, you know what? Well, I wish Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab could have been alive today to meet you and tell him how to memorize, because it took him eight years to memorize Al-Baqarah. You know why? Because the way the Sahaba dealt with the Quran was like that. Read, understand, tadabbar, ponder, and then memorize. Read, understand, ponder, memorize. Read, understand, ponder, memorize. Read, understand, ponder, memorize. But our way is memorize, memorize, memorize. Memorize, memorize, memorize. Our way is better than the way of the Sahaba in one thing. It makes us memorize quickly. But it doesn't change us. It doesn't change us. Their way huh, made them the best generation that ever walked the face of the earth. These Sahaba, before becoming Muslim, they were not like us. Some Muslims were not that good. No, they were kuffar. Yeah, Omar ibn al-Khattab himself was what? Was some, he, he even used his, his genius mentality in harming Muslims in evil. He is the one who innovated the idea of every family torturing its own members, mem Muslim members, so that families of Quraysh do not fight with each other. And then he took his sword and he wanted to go and kill Prophet Muhammad So an undercover Sahabi saw him said, where are you going? He said, I'm going, I'm fed up, I'm going to kill Muhammad. He said, you're going to kill him and you leave Islam in your own house. Go and check your sister and her husband. So he made him change his direction and to, to actually uh, yani spare Prophet Muhammad. So he went to his sister, he beat her up, he beat her husband up, and then we all know the incident, and then he wanted to pull that paper. She said, you are Najis, you go and you, you, you uh, 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 wash first. He washed, he took it, he read it, he became Muslim. Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. He read it with pondering. He's a Kafir. But by reading it with pondering, it changed him. He said, take me to Rasulullah. What changed him? It's the Quran. It's the Quran. So that's the issue. We need to allow the Quran to change it. I don't want to keep going. I can keep going forever. But what I will advise you if you want to start pondering the quran and you do not know arabi we have a playlist on youtube on our channel which is called bridges foundation channel am i allowed to advertise that subscribe and click the notification anyway and on on this playlist the playlist is called how to ponder the quran even if you don't know arabic it's a workshop that will teach you how there are keys for pondering the Quran. If you know Arabic, there is a playlist of 15 episodes called Mafatih al Tadabbur that will teach you the techniques of pondering the Quran and the types of the two types of pondering the Quran. 
um, uh, spiritual pondering and mental or, or uh, uh, what do they call uh, scripture reasoning. There are techniques. And then I suggest that after that you start pondering the Quran every day and you take another workshop called the purification of the heart. In Arabic it is called at tarbiya al-imaniya. If you watch the videos attentively, you will benefit 1%. If you do the homework that we tell you to do at the end of every episode, it's a daily homework, so you shouldn't watch more than one episode every week because you need to give yourself time to do the daily homework. The daily homework mainly, mainly is tadabur of the Quran and there's also tadabur for the nature. That you go and they look in the nature every day for 15 minutes and say, This is real Sufism, by the way, without deviation. Real cleaning for your spiritualities. Away from deviations, away from dancing. No, 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 no. Real, real cleansing of the heart, cleansing of the soul. And then you do that and come tell me how you feel. It changed the lives of people. And I'm coming here with this message to you. Anyway, I will stop at this point and open the floor for, um, for questions and answers. Okay, there's a question here. Can I tell the brother? Inshallah, what we can do. Maybe he can come here and say his question. Can you come to, to say your question? Okay. Uh, I was thinking that we maybe take, that we take um, uh, this mic. Put it here. This one. Okay, good. Yes. Give me a sec. Just one. Okay. Okay. Oops. And we will come. Okay. Inshallah. And the ladies also can ask their questions. So I don't know how. But if they tell me the question, I can repeat it, or? Yeah, if they want to come downstairs, they can, inshallah. But if, uh, I think even from upstairs, uh, acoustic is good. Yes. Yeah, from no yes. Problem, yes. If you would like to ask a question, just come yes. uh, close to the... To the, uh, to the balcony. Uh, it looks like a balcony. A is what? I'm sorry. A is what? And slowly. Okay. So, so one thing that I personally struggle with is that there is a lot of content. Content. On, on, in, on the internet, essentially. And I find that, you know, uh, keeping the life story of Prophet Sallallahu in perspective with, with the Quran and the organization becomes a real challenge sometimes. In order for us to be able to, because, because I, I do believe that Quran is a book to be appreciated before anything else, yeah, you know. Uh, and so, how do we how do we sort of consolidate? Like, I'll give you an example uh, again from personal experience. Sheikh Yasser probably has 104 video series, about an hour, an hour and a half, and a half lecture each, you know, uh, discussing life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in great detail, mashallah, you know. And understanding things <coughs> on you know, in context of, you know, how he did becomes a real challenge again because of the fact that there's just really too much content. Um, you know, so consolidating the two becomes really, really difficult. So how, um, like, in, in this program, like, is, is it, does it contextualize things as well? Or do we need to contextualize things when we are content of the Quran? Okay. Just like a look here. I want you to separate between the Quran and anything else, including the life of the Prophet ﷺ. If you study Mafatih al Tadabbur, there are techniques, like for example, how to turn every ayah into a dua. 
And this will, when you read the Quran, even not very slowly, but even if you read it quite quick, in a, because some people like to read the Quran also quickly for revision, but not very quickly, you will still benefit from this type of tadabbur. And there is another tadabbur, which is the mental tadabbur. And you read and you ponder upon the meaning, put yourself in every ayah and see what the ayah is telling you. Some surahs are about incidents from the seerah. Like for example, Surah Al-Fatih, about Al-Hudaybiyah, okay? They can be understood, these surahs can be understood in the context of the life of the Prophet. But not every surah is like that at all. And the beauty here is, when you see the relationships between the surahs, some surahs descended nine years before the surah, that it comes directly after. And subhanallah, as if it descended after it immediately. Amazing. So there is a lot of uh, aspects that will amaze you in the Quran. Separate between the Quran and any other uh, branch of knowledge like the seerah, like the sunnah, like, but take the Quran as it is first and check the mafatih al-tadabbur or the uh, keys of tadabbur and they will help you a lot. Actually, we, we have been doing that on daily basis since 835 days and we didn't have a problem. But I'll tell you the truth. When we started, we started with Surah Yunus. Because actually it's called Hadr al-Tajawwal, which means curfew. These are the seals called curfew because we didn't intend to do the whole Quran. We just, we said, okay, they started the curfew. No one can get out from his house. Prophet Yunus was also locked down like us. Let's take Prophet Yunus Surah until the curfew is over. We finished it in 28 days and the curfew is not over. So people said, let's continue, let's continue. Then people su suggested, why don't we continue until we finish the Quran? I said, okay, but vow with me that we continue every single day and we, we never stop. They said, and thousands vowed that vow and we are continuing, alhamdulillah. But I'll tell you the truth, after we reached the end of the Quran, we started Al-Fatiha and Al-Baqarah, and now we are in the middle of Al-Nisa. Now we finished 25 and a half juz. I really feel like it was a blessing to start from Yunus. Because now I'm studying surahs that are Medinan surahs, a lot of do's and don'ts. Studying the Meccan surahs first, or most of what we studied were Meccan surahs, helped a lot. Many people who are like, two modern people who are with me, feel okay with the Medinan instructions and do's and don'ts and stuff. And Sami, so that's my only point. Yani if you don't want to start from the beginning, I would suggest start from Yunus. And like that, when we end, we will end with a tawbah which was the last surah that descended. That's the only thing that I may tell you here. Barakallahu fikum. Any sister want to say anything? You can come to the balcony and speak. Okay. Thanks for that. That's a very good question. Neither one. I'll tell you. With kids, little kids who are still learning, they're, you know, they say first impressions last. What do we do to kids? What do kids love most? Stories and games, right? What do we do to them? We take them to the 30th Jews. It is the 30th Jews, which means the last Jews. No, no, no. We will treat it as the first. Allah said, Inna anzalna Quran and Arabi and open it from this side. No, 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 no. We will open it from the other side. 
And we take them to a Jews that doesn't have much stories, actually. Even like one of the stories ended by the believers uh, burning in fire and the king who was kafir, uh, this criminal, nothing happened to him. Oh. And the kind of stories that kids love, cartoonish stories of the man who have put chicken wings on a mountain, chicken thighs on a mountain, chicken drumsticks on a mountain, and then he called them, they came walking, they don't see it except when they are 20. <laughs> Why? Why did we waste this chance? This could have been one of the first stories they see. And the man who had a cane with which he threw and it became a serpent. And it ate the ropes and sticks of the magicians. And then the same stick split the sea. And then the same stick uh, made water gush out from the from the stones from the rocks cartoonish stories no kids don't see that because they are not in the 30s just okay i'll tell you my own experience 25 years ago i used to teach quran in a, an islamic school in america and i set a goal before I do anything, I just put a goal. Uh, before uh, doing a game or before doing a, uh, a film, a documentary, I put, this is my goal from this film. And then everything I do has to lead to this goal. If it doesn't lead to this goal, I won't do it. My goal from teaching those children was to make them love the Quran. That's my goal. What do children love most? Stories and games. Okay. And we will learn through stories and games. How? First, I, before I go to the school, I prepare the story. And then on that day, I tell them, open page number 24. We start from the beginning, but I don't take it in sequence, no. I just take stories, 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 stories. Every day a new story, every day a new story. And we learn ahkam al tilawa in it. We don't memorize until we master ahkam al tilawa so that when we memorize, we memorize cleanly without mistakes because the mistake that the kid will memorize if he memorizes something by mistake uh, in his childhood he, it will stay with him forever i had i had i have experience with myself i have a problem with that i just said last a few days ago i i said it wrong why because i learned it wrong when i was a child and i had a a, a brother in a maqra'a in Egypt, who used to say, Ma adhunnu an tabidha hadihi abada. Instead of tabid. Tabid means it will egg. Tabid means it will perish. And I say, tabid. I say, okay, tabid, tabid. Okay, say it in the ayah, and the ayah says, tabid. Oh my God. So we used every Jum'ah to bring him, to, to, to bring this ayah away from him so that he, it doesn't fall in his uh, portion. And then a couple of people enter and they sit in the maqra and then we find that he is reading it again. And we stop and people keep laughing and so So this is the issue. So what we do is every day a new story. In the story within this story we learn a new hukm of tilawa. For example, a meme wa nun al-mujaddadatin, for example. And I explain it to them and how we will pronounce it. And then let's play. This boy will read and I will not Correct him. I want to see who among you will find his mistakes. After he finishes, everyone raises his hand like this, one mistake, two mistakes. If he doesn't raise his hand, he doesn't find any mistakes. And then we listen to all of them. What were his mistakes? Like that, kids are engaged all the time. Ask anyone who teaches Quran. His biggest challenge is that every kid benefits for only three minutes when he is reciting and he is correcting him and all, bro, everybody else is heedless playing with each other, bothering each other, pulling things from each other, that's it. But like that, every kid is benefiting 10 times more any halqa else, okay? So that's one game, but kids will get bored. You have to be you know, innovative. There's another game, which is, kids, I will recite this ayah and I announced that I will make four mistakes. Let me see who among you will find the mistakes. 
and I read, and all of them are opening their books, their Qurans, and looking at me like this. After I finish, like this, it means he found two mistakes. Like this, he found the four mistakes, and they keep telling us. So like that, we, they are all engaged all the time, and like that, we are benefiting and playing and enjoying. I'll tell you the truth. When I first started, and the people saw that I'm starting from Al-Baqarah, two parents came to the school to fight with me. And they went to the headmaster and they said, what is this guy doing? He wants our kids to hate Islam. Why little kids are studying Al-Baqarah? She said, listen, Wallahi, I don't know what he's doing, but I trust Brother Fadl. Let's give him some time. After one month, both of them came with a present and gave me this present and said, Jazakallah khair. You can't imagine. Before, when the kids are in the room, they are so noisy and they are fighting with each other and playing violently. Now, they close the door can't hear anything. So we were worried. We opened the door suddenly and we found that all the toys are on the floor and every one of them is holding a Quran and the, one of them is reading and the other one is correcting him. Their toy became the Quran. They loved it. It became a storybook and a book of games. That's exactly what I wanted because my goal was that they love the Quran. So that's the issue. Kids, let them love the Quran. First impressions last. A lot of stories, a lot of games. It's fun. And then by time when they excel, let's start learning. Let's start understanding and so on. But kids are not going to do that do to the board until the age of nine, maybe. Okay. Yes, so uh, with small kids, it's sometimes easy with stories. But how to convince teenagers once this is asking? Uh, to make it <coughs> of course, we should. Okay. Okay. Bismillah. Okay. Of course, that's why tarbiyah from childhood is important, and upbringing the right way is important. But okay, a teenager, we need to find why is he or she resistant and then we try to work with this and then we can show him or her examples of other teenagers who benefited or who enjoyed it or it changed their life so you need to convince them somehow I really don't know because every case is different from the other but I need to find his problem you know what sometimes it's our mistake because we lie to the kids we tell them listen if you pray on time and you memorize the Quran, you, you will live a life free from problems. You will enjoy this life. You, will have, you won't have any problems. Allah will make everything easy for you. And then when the kid is 13 or 14, he finds that oh, there's a lot of stress in school and exams and he's not enjoying then maybe Salah is not working or Quran is not working because he has been memorizing and he has been praying on time. So that's, that's a mistake. Who said that? This life is the place of problems. We came here to face problems and our test is to face the problems with patience and wisdom like that. We pass the test. Praying and reading the Quran and memorizing the Quran, these are duties that you have to do anyway. But it doesn't mean that you will live a life free from problems. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to make a dua. Oh Allah, Allah marzukhli min al yaqini ma tuhawinu bihi alayya man sa'ib al dunya. Oh Allah, give me a strong conviction with which you make me able to face or to, 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 um, to ease the calamities of this life. But he did not ask for a life free from calamities. Why? There is no life free from calamities. A life free from calamity is paradise. So you should not bluff your kid. 
So here, when we are talking to teenagers, we want them to do tadabbur. We just tell them, try, come and enjoy this. And, and there's no coercion. Don't try to coerce. So just tell them, try, and so on. And sometimes they will do it away from you. Sometimes kids just like, teenagers especially, like to test your limits. And sometimes they do good things, by the way, away from you. They don't want you to see it. This perspective is very interesting to study. Uh, many of us who have studied uh, the Tian tradition in the of they certainly would not allow you to go into a rain until you have a flag. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they drill you on uh, manners. And, and certainly, uh, as a young person, to get to that stage in Charlotte, easier than later on. Another question that um, continues uh, from Sisters. Uh, when you do the temple, how do you give yourself the time to apply the lessons to learn? Yeah. Well, at least I am myself in the stage of Tadabur only, trying to apply. Hopefully we can. But the issue is, do as much as you can. Yeah, of course, but Tadabur itself, in itself, helps you have a different view of this world. It, it really makes, uh, it eases the calamities, it eases the problems. Uh, one of the stories of the girls who stopped the antidepressants told me, I've been on antidepressants for 12 years. And guess when, how, what happened to me when I started the tadabbur? I felt much better, mashallah. And then the worst thing that can happen to a girl happened to me. It could have killed me had I not been doing tadabbur. I said, what? She said, my fiancé broke up with me. And you don't know when this happens to girls? They keep making dua. Oh Allah, let him come back. And then, oh Allah, if there is good in him, let him come back. And then, oh Allah, if there is no good in him, let there be good in him and let him come back. <laughs> but guess what? Because I was on this tadabur, I didn't even care. And I really, oh Allah, I loved him so much. But I, it was so easy for me. Because the tadabur, I'll tell you something. Many people, after like, Three, four months from continuous tadabur, they start feeling that they love the Qur'an so much. The love of the Qur'an increases in their heart. It's not the love of the Qur'an. But they, it's, they cannot express it. It's the love of Allah. The Qur'an is the word of Allah. So what happens is that you started to love Allah more, but you can't express it. Say, I started to love the Qur'an more. Habibi, you started to love Allah more. This is the issue. And you start to love Allah more when you start connecting with Al-Mala Al-A'la. You're connecting. The Quran is not like any book. Any book was written in this world for the world to read it. The Quran is Tanzeelu Min Rabbil Alameen. Tanzeel. It's a book that descended on this world from outside the world for the world to read it. It's something else. So you're connecting with 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 the unseen realm so it makes this realm nothing for you whatever problem it's easy doesn't matter alhamdulillah that i just did not skip my quran that's the most important thing in my life wallahi but these things wallahi cannot be explained it has to be felt it has to be experienced you know Sheikh Safat Khalilovic? He's my dear friend. Um, this question, a uh, little challenge I face, especially with my, with my kid. Uh, How know, old is he? He's a uh, seven year old man. Okay. Uh, you know, as a father to teach you, your own kid is a, is a little bit more challenging. Someone else is teaching, but 
Anyway, uh, when I'm trying to teach in Quran, I find myself, you know, uh, choosing between uh, let him repeat uh, to memorize. Uh, on the other hand, I would like him to, to let him know how to read. So I give him like the, the, the basics of the Qadam and the uh, and sometimes I found him loving to recite. Hmm. Uh, more than, you know, setting the rules and knowing how to pronounce the letters. That's more interesting him. At the end of the day, I want him to know how to decide, how to read from the Quran. So, uh, if there's any advice in, in that regard, okay. That's because you are the father teaching. How about a friend teaching? Do you think a friend can teach his friend better? Sure. Be his friend. Play for a while with him. Every day, play for an hour with him. Prophet Muhammad used to go on his knees and crawl, putting his children on his back and say, what do you think about your camel? Isn't your camel a good camel? So like that, when you become his friend, he will even listen more, he will take more your advice because you become his friend. That's one. Second, let him do what he likes more because he's choosing between two things in the Quran still. Okay, let him do what he likes more and then at the end, if he needs to do the other thing, well, at the end, let's take five minutes to do this. Okay, but don't push him against his will. Okay? May Allah bless him, inshallah. And by the way, seven is the time to play after the match. Is he playing after the match and save the turtles or not? He will, he, he must, seven is the time to play our games. It's from seven to 17. Yes. Some people play after 17. Yeah, but our game, yeah, we have a third game, inshallah. By the way, these are games that protect from atheism in later stages of life. They're very important games. Hmm. Hmm. And they are like friends, with the YouTubers. Hmm. They all are Muslims, and they how, how can like, like teach them to live this? Why are they? Why are they attracted to them? They're more interesting. We must do. We must have substitute. We must have the substitute. Find substitutes and show them. Sometimes they are stubborn. Don't show them. Just listen to them away from them. Don't tell them even to come and watch it. You, you, you listen to them and they will passing, they will look, huh? what is he doing? And they will come to see what you're doing. So something, you know your kids, but some of them, if they are stubborn, don't try with them. Do it in their presence and don't even tell them to come and see. They hear you. They, they will come to check and then they will take and then they will go inside and they will do it. They will type it and see what you're, what you're watching. Like that. So, yes, of course. Of course. It's, it's very challenging, I know. Uh, this is very important uh, in, in education and in uh, when, you, when we see people you know, and we know it very well, but we see with our kids, if we are engaged in our own game, and they are engaged in their game, we are not spending productive time. But if we engage ourselves in the same game, uh, there will be a lot of positive competition and a lot of education on day which is good. <laughs> Egyptian people understand each other. So we are, we are two uh, new members who would like to join uh, your program. Okay, good. How can we join your daily program? For okay, uh, it's in Arabic, by the way. You have to, if you want to join live, live is at 3.30 uh, Canada time, p.m. Um, and um, we, it, it's on my Facebook page or uh, our YouTube channel, YouTube channel, Bridges Foundation channel, and your YouTube uh, Facebook page, it's Fadl Solomon page. You will find two pages. One is the personal account in which I wear white. That's not the one. 
The fan page is the one that you need to subscribe to, to, to click follow, and um, in which you will find my uh, picture with Brother Khaled Abu Shadi in Tahrir Square. That's, that's my fan page. On this one, plays the live every day. But what I suggest, I want you to join starting tomorrow, but still, I want you to watch Mafatih Tadabbur playlist very important okay so you will have to watch it in parallel with it or start with it until we like finish and or something and then like that. and this is a very interesting question how can we make sure that the Quran is the correct understanding since we have sometimes limited knowledge is it better to rely on videos and parapas no. instead of doing your own no 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 if you watch Tadabbur beyond Arabic or how to ponder the Quran or Mafatih Tadabbur, it will explain to you. Tadabbur is not tafsir. If Tadabbur was tafsir, then it would be haram to do Tadabbur. Because it's haram to do tafsir. Unless you're a scholar of tafsir. You need to be capable of doing tafsir. Tafsir is different. Tafsir can give you do's and don'ts. Halal and haram. Tadabur doesn't. Tadabur just you just come up with certain uh, messages to your heart that will increase you in iman, in compassion, in it's something different. You see what I just discussed with you now that every time Allah speaks about punishment, He speaks after that about clearing Himself from injustices. What does that mean? Allah cares about us and how we uh, feel towards him and like that it's all about your relationship with Allah you put yourself in an ayah like for example لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله have we descended this Quran on a mountain you would see it crumbling of awe from Allah تدبر is to put yourself in the ayah if Quran can make a mountain crumble, why isn't it affecting my heart? Why isn't it affecting me? لو أنزلنا هذا هذا is اسم إشارة للقريب This Quran which is close to you It's in your pocket It's on your iPhone It's in your drawer It's everywhere How come it's not affecting you? So tadabbur is messages to your heart So don't worry don't worry about that at all. It's not going to give you something wrong to do. There is no do's and don'ts. One uh, practical question is: well, Do you have a uh, subject trying to learn Arabic or program or lessons for teaching this Quran and No, but I have this technique explained in an episode on I think Dhikr al Ibra, which in Arabic. Uh, but, but I, no, I also have it in English um, in a series called Islamophobia. Um, it, if you type how to teach our children the Quran and next to it Fadl Solomon on YouTube, you will get it inshallah. Uh, but it's just teaching the technique. I, I don't teach Quran to children myself now. What contradicts with what? One moment. What contradicts with what? No, no, no. Like, uh, in modern times, like, people go to university. Mm -hmm. In this country, I'm talking about, not even Egypt or somewhere. And they, let's say, they study Darwin, you know, they study some other evolution theory or other theories or so many other issues, which we, we know. So, and then they read Quran, and then reconciling the two, wondering and speaking the right things. That's a big challenge. What is your advice to that? people who go to the university and how they come out with their clear idea that okay, this is what I should be doing but this is what I am doing. Often the, the left teachers is all are 
بارك الله فيكم القران will never ever contradict with a scientific fact it may contradict with theories but not a fact second what is the difference between allah's ilm and human ilm allah's knowledge and human knowledge human knowledge gets updated every now and then einstein this had he some discoveries made us find that newton's science discoveries and sciences were not so accurate to you see and then now even einstein's theories also have been updated so it wasn't very accurate right so human knowledge gets updated every day we like that huh Allah's knowledge doesn't get updated. He is Al Alim. Alim is actually ala wazn fa'il. This, uh, you know, in there are roots. In root, the root, the word root is ala ma. So Alim, which means all knowing, is the 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 root of fa'il, and this means the source of the fa'il. So Allah is the source of knowledge. Like alim means the source of pain. Painful. What is painful? Painful is the source of pain, right? Alim, the source of knowledge. So his knowledge doesn't get updated. So whenever I find that a theory contradicts with the Quran, we have, by the way, um, in our second game, this is dealt with. It's one of the root causes of atheism, by the way. It is dealt with in the mind of children in one of the games. It's called Save the Turtles. And Yusuf asks Ahmed, two children talking to each other. Ahmed, what do we do when we find that there's a contradiction between science and the Quran? So he explains, he says, science will never contradict with the Quran. But when I say science, I mean scientific facts that are not going to change. But if you find contradiction, there may be two things. Either you yourself did not understand the Quran and you thought that it contradicts with this scientific theory or you did not understand the scientific theory also or the scientific theory will get updated later but you need to trust one of them which one are you going to trust the knowledge that it can that is not getting updated will not the full knowledge that will not be updated or the knowledge that gets updated every day. You choose. So, Understand? What are the beliefs? So, I, I just wanted to claim that, of course, the most thing we know this is the absolute knowledge of the Quran. Yeah. My question was not that. So, I'm talking about there. People go to university and then they get a job. They are in a situation where they find uh, you know, things that they do that are not aligned with the teaching. And in that circumstances, what are the options for the Ah, you mean contradicting with the do's and don'ts, doing haram things. This has nothing to do with tadabbur. This has to do with taqwa. That's it. Well, Allah told me not to sell wine. And then I choose to sell wine because this is my job. This has nothing to do with tadabbur here. It has to do with taqwa. Haram will remain haram, even if everyone does it. It will remain haram. That's it. Uh, what other ways uh, can we uh, encourage people to understand the Quran other than uh, games and stories? People here, yeah, it's not about maybe just kids. Other ways to encourage people to understand the Quran? People who are adults? Okay, well, I told you, kids love games and stories. I'm not going to tell an adult to play kids' uh, games and stories, but I'm going to tell him this will increase your feeling of calmness. Adults need calmness, need contentment, rida, need to feel a way out of this depression, depressing life. Contentment is in the Quran. Raha. You know what? When I tell people, should we stop for Eid at least one day? Those kids, those people who are with me every day, 
They say, why? I said, to take a break, to have some raha. They say, do we take raha from raha? Do we take rest from rest? Quran is the rest. Why do you want to take rest from rest? Quran is what makes, what makes us feel relaxed. How can we get relaxed from relaxation? So the issue is, is how people look at the Quran. It's not a burden. The problem is many people were, were abroad the wrong way that Quran is a burden. You have to memorize it because you need to be better than your cousin. And there's like, oh, if you don't do that, then you will be punished. So first impressions lost and the Quran became like a burden. It's like a scary book for many people. That's wrong. When the what? When the dean is taught in a way that it's not helpful for them. For example, you just brought up the point right now um, about how like, you, know, you don't read your salah. As kids, you don't do this, you know, you're going to go to the green and burn, whatever. You know, if you, you know, just like these little things that add on and it completely removes their heart from the dean because they only associate negative feelings. Yeah. They, like, you know, and as adults, you know, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, childhood memories are familiar with that. They can't, so they can't like, separate those students from the team. I don't know why people can't separate. Allah, so maybe it's my ADHD that makes me able to separate my childhood. Because I also had like wrong things being told to me. And I take them funny now. Yeah. Allah, so, oh my God, my dad used to say so. <laughs> That's it. But I feel, don't feel like I'm, I have a, 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 a wounded child inside that I want to. There's no problem with that. We all had wrong things. All of our parents gave us wrong information. Now we knew the right information, avoid doing that to kids, and that's it. I don't see a problem, actually. Now, I will tell you, we have three scenarios with the relationship with Allah. Scenario of fear, that you fear his punishment, so you do the good, you stay away from evil. And that's a good scenario. But there's another scenario, scenario of greed. You want to enjoy his blessings in this life and in the year after. So you do the good, you stay away from evil, which is not a bad scenario as well. But the best scenario and the perfect scenario is the scenario of love. You love Allah, you do what he loves. Because you want him to be pleased with you. And you stay away, you stay away from what angers him. That's the best scenario. But you can't continue on that scenario all the time. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said to the companions, if you stay on this level of Iman that you are with, that you are on, when you are with me, Wallahi, the angels will be shaking hands with you in the streets. No way. We are human beings. So we have uh, our own desires and these desires bring our Iman down. So Iman is like a sine wave. It increases and decreases. What is the dalil? Allah said in the Quran, So that the believers may increase in faith. So it increases. And what is the uh, dalil that it decreases? Because in this religion, everything should be with the dalil. Don't take information without the dalil from anyone. Decreases because the Prophet ﷺ said, The thief does not steal when he is uh, on a state of uh, uh, believing. Uh, and, and same thing, the fornicator does not fornicate when he's a believer. So it decreases and increases. So when it's in the peak, you are doing everything because you love Allah. But when your iman decreases, here comes the role of the two gifts that Allah gave to you. Paradise and hellfire. It's a gift, wallahi. In this life, it's a gift because it reminds you and then you correct yourself and then you rectify the wave. You don't go to the negative area of sins. See? So like that, even if this was not given to you as a child, take it funny. Believe me, don't tell me the memories of childhood are painful. Come on. Wallahi, take it easy. I'm not taking it easy. To take, to take it easy. I know that there's now therapy and they deal with the wounded child and they do certain... I don't... 
But wallahi, all of us took wrong information and I don't, I, I don't want to tell you what my father was telling me. Yeah. You know what, if you do this, I will bring the matchbox and I will lit everyone and I will extinguish it in your foot. He never did it. But I remember it now and I don't feel wounded at all. I just laugh at it. <laughs> All right. Someone else may take this like he will have complex, he will hate his father. That's nothing. Take it easy, guys. All right. Take care, Habib. And by the way, the Quran deals with all these things too. If you do tadabur, wallahi, it's an amazing remedy for everything. Amina. Amin. 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 And I lost many friends. Some of them, I discovered that they were not real friends. But I discovered one friend that is better than your best friend because your best friend will leave you one day, by death at least. But this friend is the only friend that will not leave you until you leave him first. And that's the Quran. That's the Quran, my best friend. The one that has made the last nine years of my life easy. Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallahu khair.